All right, so this uh, tutorial video is gonna show you how to create some landforms. Um, and I have two techniques to use to make landforms. So what you see in front of me, um, you guys are going to be given a uh, 14 by 14 centimeter piece of cardboard and that is gonna be the base for your landform. Um, what you've seen me do here um, is I've actually added what I like to call either, I call them uh, skeletons, or it's kind of like your base that will help you build your landform. Um, you wanna have something solid as a base uh, in order to use the techniques I'm gonna show you because if you don't have a solid base, a lot of times your landform will collapse and it'll ruin whatever shape you're trying to get. So these are two examples of skeletons that you can use um, to build up uh, a landform that's a, a, a larger landform or a landform that, that is, is built high up. So um, we're gonna start uh, with this one here and it's just a piece of egg carton, if you guys can see. It's just uh, a piece of an egg carton. And I went ahead and hot glued it onto this base um, so that we can use it. So we made our clay the other day. What you will do is you're gonna then cover this with the clay. Um, and I always like using smaller, thinner layers of clay. If you, if you make the clay too thick, one, it takes a lot longer for it to dry. Um, and two, sometimes you'll get that collapsing effect. So what I'm gonna do using this base, which is nice and strong, is I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with the clay now. And again, this is air dry clay, so it will sit out for about a day, especially since we're gonna be working on these like every other day. It'll sit out for a day and this will actually dry into a nice um, plaster type material. And once it is dry, it'll stay, it won't move anywhere. And the other thing that's great about it is you can then paint this. Um, with regular paint and because it's dry the paint sticks to it very nicely a lot of times if you just use cardboard the cardboard actually absorbs the paint and it doesn't work out as well as you would want it to so as you can see I am just using a little bit little chunks of the clay and I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up with the clay and that is going to allow this then to dry and it'll be this nice hard shell on the outside for you to then paint. So this could be something like a, maybe like a strato volcano or even a mountain build here. And again, starting with a nice solid base underneath works really well. And then you can cover it with the clay. So you don't need a lot of clay for this. This is the other thing, it kind of saves your clay too. So you're not like building a giant chunk of clay. Instead, you're just covering the outside of it and making sure that you get it firmly down on the base. So this is one of the techniques that you can use to do a 3D model, especially, like I said, a 3D model that's raised up off of the base platform. Um, having a nice base underneath it will allow this to, um, to hold up and stand up and keep its shape better, okay? So that is the easy way to start if you're doing a build, again, say like a mountain or a, um, a stratovolcano or some other build, maybe a plateau, these would be, um, this is a good technique to use for that. So uh, minimize the use of clay, but also um, have a nice strong base underneath it so that it doesn't collapse down and you lose your shape. Because again, the shape is gonna be one of the ways that you're gonna be graded on these. So there is just kind of the start. Um, I'll probably work on this a little bit more and show you guys what it looks like after it's dried for a day and then um, show you some painting techniques as well. So that's one um, technique that you can use, which is again, using our homemade clay, um, our salt water and flour clay. If you wanna go a different route, um, maybe you don't wanna get clay all over your hands or um, you are building a, a larger structure that you're concerned that you might, um, it might collapse down. Again, you build what I would call a frame. So you guys see, it looks like a, like a skeleton of a mountain, let's say. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use a different technique called paper mache. Um, so what I have here is a solution of water and Elmer's glue. That's it. That's all you need for your um, solution for your paper mache. You, you dump some uh, Elmer's glue in and then you just put some water on top of it and it makes this kind of whitish looking um, liquid. And this is what we're going to use as our paper mache, um, our paper mache glue. Okay. For paper mache, um, you can use any type of paper for paper mache. You can use scrap paper that you have in the classroom. But I have found, uh, after doing some research over the summer, I have found that one of the best things to use 
these pieces of toilet paper. So I'm gonna have the toilet paper in my classroom. I will make a solution of this and you are also able to use this. So let me show you how this works. So I would start at the base and I would go ahead and put some of the paper mache glue on the base here. And then all you do is you take your toilet paper and you just lay it right on top of where you put that paper mache glue. Once it's laid down, you then just wanna gently put some more of the glue on top of it. And you gotta be gentle with this because um, as you guys know, the um, toilet paper is, is really thin. But what is great about this is once it dries, it will dry solid and it will dry solid and it will be able to be painted on as well. So this is another technique that you can use. It's very simple, doesn't require a lot of materials, um, but you can see that I've now covered this with a thin layer of toilet paper. Because this toilet paper is really thin, you can add a second layer on top of it the same way. You can actually layer this up really well. And then again, you wanna saturate it with the glue solution. And again, being careful to avoid uh, ripping as best you can. That's why I'm using a paintbrush. Uh, just gently kind of putting the, the glue solution on top. All right, and then you just keep continue to grab pieces of toilet paper and keep adding them on. I like to put a little layer underneath to allow it to stick to the surface that you're using. Like so. And again, the nice thing about this is it's not heavy, so it won't collapse down. And once it's dry, and it only takes a day for it to dry, once it's dry, you can paint on this really, really well, and um, it'll hold the paint then much better. That's, again, the toilet paper works really well because you can use it to paint on after it's dried, and it stays in its shape. So you guys can see, um, here's my skeleton on this side, and then this side over here, where I have the, using the paper mache glue, um, is now forming a shape for it. So um, this is especially good if you're not one that really wants to get your hands on all that clay and get clay all over your hands and fingers. Um, this makes it very easy. The other great thing is, let's say you needed like um, some, some like uh, built up of, uh, some buildup of like magma or lava, or it has some kind of um, structure that needs to stick out a little bit. You can actually do, take the toilet paper and roll it into like a ball and you can add it on here and it will stand out a little bit more. It'll give it a little bit more texture, but you do the exact same thing. You just coat that with your paper mache glue and it will give it some body, some texture. And as you can see, now you have kind of like a little ridge that you've made here to give it some, I guess, personality or um, to accent maybe where there has been some buildup of either like magma lava or you can even do a second one and now you look like you have a little valley that'll stick out right here. And you can see that you can do multiple layers in one day. You don't have to, you know, just do one layer and then wait a day and do another layer. You can do that, but now you can see it's giving this mountain a little bit, some texture here. So it looks like we have maybe some rivers of, of lava that have flown out and, and then dried. So this is another great technique, um, especially if you're doing things like mountains. Um, and even if you're not doing something as, as big as this, you can also just build up a small, section by taking your toilet paper and just pinning it down on here and it makes like a little a ridge to give some accent to your landform all right and again I like the toilet paper because it absorbs this really well so there now we have this little like mini hill here at the bottom and you can then let that dry and then paint over it. So I've now shown you two techniques on making your 3D models. Um, once again, starting out with a base or a skeleton as I like to call it, to give it some body. 
and then adding either your clay to the outside of it or using our toilet paper paper mache is a great way to build your um, to build your landforms. Hope that helped out. I'll have these materials in class for you and uh, good luck on making your landforms. All right, so we have allowed our landforms to dry for a day. So what we have here is um, you can see the clay has not dried entirely, which is why I'm, I'm doing an every other day thing with working with the clay, but it has, the outside has definitely solidified. You can still see some of it is still a little, um, little damp and that's okay because it, it'll be another day before it has dried out completely. Um, but this is what you end up with after about a day uh, using the clay. And again, the, the, um, thinner you keep the layers, the easier it is going to be for this to dry. So this is actually ready to be painted. Um, you have to be careful because if you push down on some of the spots that are still a little damp, they may collapse in a little bit, but you can actually start painting this at this phase. Um, this is the outer layer here is good and ready to go. Um, and then here is our paper mache, which is completely dried. Like I said, it only takes about a day for this to dry. Um, so this is the paper mache. And as you can see, it made a nice, uh, like a mountain, could be a stratovolcano, depending on um, what you find. But A, it's super light, and B, it is now hard, um, almost like a plaster. So this is also ready to be painted, colored. Um, you can even use markers on it, though. I am going to err on, uh, with you guys on the side of using paint. Paint is going to be your best shot for this. Um, so this is ready to go as well, and um, as you can see, the, the toilet paper actually gives it a really nice texture. So it's not like a smooth piece of uh, plaster, it's actually got some of this real texture to it. So when you're painting, you can actually pick up some of these, some of these little dips in um, the texture that's on the outside, and it will make it look more organic, look, look more real. Um, and your, your next step is to find the right colors of paint, mix the right colors of paint, and to get this to look just like a picture that you find on the internet, and you will be successful. So um, there are the two landforms that have dried, and they are ready to be painted to make them look like the landform that you find online. I'll do some painting tips in the next video.